Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I'll show you several upcycling projects. Hope you like them. The first item I'm going to work with is this IKEA stool. I think everyone recognizes it. It's named Froster. This one is very old and it has seen better days. We've painted something on it and the varnish is chipping off because it used to sit in a garage, so the surface looks really bad, but it is still sturdy and I've decided to bring it back to life. I'm going to repaint it using my homemade chalk paint. I'm mixing one part white clay with one part water to get rid of any lumps and then I'm adding three parts paint. I'm going to make denim imitation, so I'm using a light blue color. By the way, it's better to mix the paint in one container and then pour it into the other one to mix better. I'm painting this tool right away, no primer. I've tasted this recipe quite a lot and it holds well like this. The first layer is quite transparent and in fact it works like a primer here. Once the first layer is dry, I'm applying the second one. And here I'm making short strokes with a brush in two directions, lengthwise and across, to get a slightly checkered texture. As you remember, I'm trying to imitate denim, so I'm making a kind of fabric-like texture. Next, I've added white acrylic to the base color to get a lighter shade and I'm dry brushing the whole surface with this color. At first I've tried to make long strokes in two directions, but in fact dry brushing reveals the texture well, so this hasn't even been necessary. It looks very similar to denim, just like I want it. I'm working out the legs and the edge of the seat with short cross strokes and then I'm blending these strokes along. It looks like a jean seam. After that I'm applying a self-adhesive stencil over the seat. This is a Barcelona Airport custom stamp. I'm making this tool for my son's bedroom. He studies Spanish and I've also made a dresser with Spanish places of interest painted over. So this tool kind of continues this Spanish theme, but of course any other stamp would do here or even no stamp at all. And then I'm applying light blue paint over the stencil with a sponge. Here I'm using the same lighter shade that I've already used for dry brushing. The best part of the work is removing the stencil. It is almost like removing a masking tape, a very pleasant feeling. To make the denim imitation even more real, I'm adding stitching. I'm drawing it with a bronze contour paint and it looks just like denim stitching. I'm making the stitching along the edge of the seat, also making a small cross stitching on the seat edge and along the edges of the leg. In order to highlight the stamp on the seat a little, I'm attaching the stencil edge here again. You can use masking tape here and dry brushing the edge with the darker shade of blue around the future pocket. And after the paint has dried, I'm attaching the stencil edge from the other side and dry brushing the inside of the pocket with the lighter shade. And I'm adding the stitching along the perimeter of the pocket here, I'm using a ruler to keep it even. I'm making a double line, just like on real jeans. By the way, you can do without stenciling the seat here and just draw a jeans pocket like on real jeans and make decorative stitching on it, it will look very cool. All that is left is to seal everything with varnish. Since this is the stool, I didn't want to use wax here because varnish holds better than wax, so I'm sealing it with matte acrylic varnish.
this still turned out to be like new. I really love how it looks now. By the way, you can also upholster the seat with real denim and make it soft. It will look great too. Thanks to using chalk paint, I've been able to create a fabric texture which I really like and the stitching really adds to the overall look. My next makeover is this nightstand. This one has been with us for as long as I can remember. I always liked it curved lines, but the tabletop had terrible spots on it, as well as the inside of the drawers, and I repainted it about 10 years ago using black oil and also painted the inside of the drawers bright turquoise. And now I want to repaint it again, since black doesn't work for the room anymore. To begin with, I'm sanding all the surfaces using fine grit. I'm not trying to sand off the oil completely, just want to make it matte for the paint to stick better. After sanding, I'm wiping off the dust with a damp cloth. Here I'll be using any Sloan chalk paints. I've bought a couple of cans for the experiments. I've got two shades here, great blue and graphite gray. And I want to try blending, like I've seen in YouTube videos of Katja. Have you seen them? She's repainting old furniture and I love her techniques, so I really wanted to try this. So, first I'm painting the whole thing blue. I let the first layer dry well and now the fun part begins. I'm applying the main shade to one side of the stand. After that, while the paint is still wet, I'm taking another brush and applying a dark color along the edges. Then I'm cleaning the first brush, in fact I'm just spraying it with water and I begin blending the paint till I get a smooth transition from one shade to another. The paint is blending very well and once it starts to dry I'm just adding more water. You can layer the paint if it turns out darker or lighter than necessary. It's better to work in small areas. I'm making each side separately so that the paint doesn't have time to dry. And of course, do not forget to wash the brush to keep it clean and wet. It's much easier to blend the paint then. On the drawers, I'm also adding dark shade where the drawer pulls will be. The most complicated thing for me in this technique is not to hook the edges of the finished parts when moving to a new area. I've constantly touched the corners, the edging of the countertop, and when I've corrected them, I've hooked them on the horizontal surfaces and I've had to blend again. In general, some practice is needed to make this nice and clean. I'm painting the inside of the drawers in graphite. I feel a little bit tired of such a bright inside. I'm sealing the paint with wax here, this makes the colors darker and richer. As for the inside of the drawers, here I'm sealing the paint using varnish. I'll keep my cosmetics here and so I want to avoid any scratches. After everything dries well, I'm attaching the pools back. 
I cannot say that I am 100% satisfied with the result. This is my first experiment with blending and it's not as smooth as I would like it to be. Plus, it was hot when I did this, this was in summer and the paint dried very quickly, making it a bit harder to blend well. But this is an experiment after all. I still can repaint it after some time. That is what I love old wooden furniture for. It's so strong and well made and allows you to carry out a variety of experiments with painting and everything. And I also want to show you the Mikoa of an old suitcase. My mother gave it to me. It is in good condition, although it is very dirty and I'll make a nightstand out of it. The first thing to do is, of course, to thoroughly clean this guy and remove all dust and dirt. The metal parts of the suitcase got rusty with age and in some places there's quite a lot of rust. Here I'm sanding it off using a fine grit. I'm mixing the chalk paint for the suitcase using the same recipe that I've used for the stool. One part clay, a little water, three parts paint. I want to make the bright orange inside and the calm dark grey outside here. I'm beginning with the inside. I watched many videos of repainting fabric with chalk paint. After painting and sealing the fabric with wax, it becomes leather-like and quite soft. So I wanted to try this technique here. I've painted the inside of the suitcase. The fabric has soaked up the paint quickly, so I've made two layers to get an even shade. But the fabric has turned out to be quite tough and waxing hasn't made it much softer. In general, I don't like the effect on the fabric here. For the suitcase, it's quite okay because I'll be able to wipe off the inside or even wash it easily, but I would definitely not paint the upholstery of furniture like that. Perhaps my chalk paint doesn't do for that or I did something wrong, but this didn't work for me. While the insides of the suitcase are drying, I'll make legs for it. I'm going to make a rectangular wooden frame. It adds an industrial feeling just right for the intended room. I'm making the frame out of 30 by 40 mm lumber. I'm cutting it to make two rectangles that are the same size as the suitcase. I'm adding a crossbar to the upper rectangle to strengthen it. I'm using long screws to assemble them. I'm attaching four pieces to connect the two resulting frames. These will be the legs. They are about 12 inches high and the total height of the suitcase sitting on the frame will be about 12 inches, as nightstands usually are. The suitcase has small metal legs on the bottom, which makes it hard to attach the suitcase to the frame, so my husband is removing them for me. Then I'm also removing the wire and winding from the handle to return its original look. And I'm covering the metal parts with masking tape. The suitcase is ready for painting. When I've painted the inside of the suitcase, some of the orange paint got on the leather outside and has peeled off easily, so I've decided that the primer is vital here. So, first I'm priming the suitcase using adhesive primer. When painting, the most tricky part is to keep the metal parts clean. It wasn't possible to completely cover all these curved things with masking tape, so in the end I've taken off the tape and I'm just painting around them using a thin brush. The best thing is that the paint hasn't hidden the texture of the leather, so the suitcase still looks like before, but has got a new color. I'm painting the wooden frame in graphite. It looks almost black in the video, but the shade is a little bit lighter. Here I'm using regular latex paint and I'm not adding clay to it. After both the frame and the suitcase are dry, I'm going to assemble them. The suitcase is made of plywood and so I'm just screwing the parts together. 
the last thing is sealing the paint. I've covered the inside of the suitcase with wax, as I've said before, hoping to get a leather-like effect. As for the outside, I'm covering the suitcase with several layers of matte varnish. The stand is for my son's bedroom and the A4 needs a really durable coating. I think it turned out to be a very cute bedside table, a kind of industrial and suits a boy's bedroom pal. My son keeps toys inside it. I would prefer a stack of suitcases, love how they look, but I don't have many suitcases on hand. Please let me know what you think of today's project down below. Thanks for watching this video, I will see you in the next one. Bye!